Welcome to the World Championship Air Race Podcast, giving you the behind the scenes look into the World Championship Air Race. My name is Alex MacPhail, and I'll be chatting to guests from the air racing community all around the world. Make sure to subscribe on your podcast platform to keep up to date with our latest releases. Now fasten your seatbelts, prepare for takeoff, and let's get airborne. Welcome to episode 10 of the World Championship Air Race. My name is Alex MacPhail. Today I've got a very interesting lineup for you. Matthias Doldra Racing Team, the team principal, Matthias Doldra, and his Aero GP1 race pilot, Florian Berger. Berger, sorry, we even tried that earlier. Berger, thank you for joining me this evening, gentlemen. Matthias, I know you're celebrating now. Germany has just won. How are you doing this evening? Absolutely. Hi, Alex. Hello, everyone. So it started off really well with a, with a win today against Portugal. So uh, re really happy for, for the German soccer team. <laughs> well done. That's great. And Florian, I know you, uh, you and I are not the biggest soccer fans, but uh, no, not a problem here. We, uh, we got lots of other things we can talk about, all things flying. How are you doing today? I know you haven't flown your airline job in a long time, but uh, good time at home with the family. Yeah, thank you for, for being here at your podcast, Alex. Um, I'm very happy and uh, enjoying life at home at the moment. Nice weather. So great. Everything's great. Okay, awesome. Now, as we are experimenting with this new format of, uh, of, of all things, World Champs Air Race is a new a format of the Red Bull Air Race, and uh, this podcast is new. This is our last episode for the season. Now we have two of you on the show, and it's the first iteration of a team owned by a team principal with an independent uh, race pilot, and that is our example tonight. So, Matthias, a former world champion with the Red Bull Air Race, let's just take a moment and start with, uh, with you, Flo, as the race pilot, uh, you know, you, you're coming in with the big expectations as well, joining a world championship winning team. You yourself, three-time champion as well in the, the Challenger Series. What have you been up to? Uh, you know, this is an exciting new phase of life for you as a, as a race pilot, getting involved in the Premier League of Aero GP1. Have you been doing little aeroplane flying? Or how's your, uh, how's your, your, your flying skills going in this sort of downtime of aviation? Well, uh, I'm at the moment at home more or less uh, because uh, I'm not flying in the airline at the moment due to the, the pandemic. But I'm flying a lot of aerobatics. I'm uh, attending a lot of uh, training camps, uh, trying to get on the European uh, Championship um, this year and fly there and uh, get as much training as I can get. And I mean, I'm, I'm so happy now uh, with the good news from uh, World Championship Air Race uh, that they want to continue and the big opportunity um, to jump in the team from Matthias. Yeah, that is great. Now, uh, it's, we'll, we'll try and weave together a bit of a story here. So I'll just spend a moment longer in terms of, of aviation. But Flo, is there, is there someone in your family background that exposed you to flying or is this a bug that caught you along the way? And uh, where did the flying bug start with you uh, as a youth, thinking back to your childhood days? Yeah, when I was uh, a little boy, I mean, my, my dad uh, was a uh, pilot in the local flying club. He's a private pilot and uh, he did a lot of... Um, glider towing towing and uh, stuff like that and I was at the airport I mean every free time I, I was I was there and uh, I mean I was fascinated by airplanes uh, when I uh, when I was a really uh, little child and so everything began with uh, with that I would say I attended some air shows local air shows with my dad and uh, when I saw my heroes back then flying the Yak 50 and uh, doing aerobatic uh, displays. Uh, this is uh, where everything start started for me. Okay, and and your 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 route was uh, conventional. Finish school, join a, a flying club, get the license, and continue from there. I mean, uh, I was very, or I'm very fortunate because my parents supported me a lot. Um, I was able to start flying gliders at the age of 13 with a special permission in Germany. I think uh, wow. it changed after that several times um, with the permissions, but um, I was very lucky. And then I made my um, way through all the licenses like uh, uh, glider pilot license and touring motor glider and uh, eventually the, the private pilot license, uh, single engine piston. Yeah, that's, that was my way uh, um, 
more or less. And then I finished school. I I did uh, my military service nine months in a fighter squadron. And uh, then there was the big decision where to go. I mean, I, I knew I want to, to make a living out of flying, airline flying or military flying. And then I had to decide. And uh, I took, uh, in the end, I took the decision uh, flying civil planes and airliners. But uh, I'm, I, I mean, also military flying uh, is also very interesting for me. And sometimes I, I wouldn't say I, I regret the, the decision, but um, I think you never know what uh, would happen if you are, if I would be a fighter pilot or something, you know, um, probably you couldn't uh, afford flying aerobatics or stuff like that. So yeah, you you never know what you what you didn't do. You can only just uh, enjoy the path that you went on as it was, uh, you know, your your journey so far. And at what point along the way did you do sort of get more involved in aerobatics? You obviously were exposed at some point along the way, but when did you start taking the aerobatic side of it more seriously? I mean, I started in 2008. I mean, I gained all the um, hours to, I mean, I think it was like 200 hours you have on a single engine piston to get your aerobatic license back then. Mm -hmm. um, I did a lot of aero towing in the flying club um, to get it free, the flying hours. And uh, eventually I did my aerobatic license in Matthias uh, flight school in Tannheim. Okay. Is this where the relationship started? Because I was about to ask you uh, along the way, did you do some Tannheim training down in Tannheim? But tell me a bit about this, Matthias, uh, your first, I don't know if you can remember the first impression of meeting Flo back then. Tell me about that, uh, that opportune time at Tannheim. Yeah, I met Flo when he was on our flying school, but actually we didn't fly together. Somehow I was uh, doing, I was busy doing flying Corsair and B25 and stuff for the flying bulls. Okay. Um, but I heard a lot of good things and it's really, really cool. I mean, to meet back at the air race and we have a really similar way of how we got into aviation and how our career started and how we had to make the decision between, between civil aviation and military. It was exactly the same. Uh, I was also at the fighter squadron and I had to make a decision. Am I, am I going for the civilian career or the military? And then uh, now we're here, and I think this is a super cool opportunity to work together, and this could be a really successful team. Okay, well, yeah, I've learned a lot of things there all of a sudden. I mean, you've got a, a similar background with fathers interested in flying and, and exposing you from a younger age and, and getting involved with your military service at a fighter squadron. But the fact that you actually met along the way too and then met again at the air race, that's, uh, that is an incredible journey. Was, it, uh, was, there, was there some steps in between where you'd cross paths along the way too, Matthias, or did you... Did you kind of see him again at the at the air race when he joined the Challenger series and say, oh, well, it's you again? Yeah, actually, it was, uh, I think it was during the air race when, when Flo joined the uh, the Challenger class. And when Flo started to do his aerobatic license at our flight school, I was, I was uh, this year I was becoming a German champion in unlimited class. So I'm a, a few years ahead of Flo. And uh, it's, it's, it's cool to see that actually he joined the same path and that we have the same interest, the same passion. And um, yeah, I mean, ever since he, he showed up at the, at the areas, it was always good to have him around. And uh, we were, my team and, and me, we were always cheering for Flo that he will do good and that he will win. And then, so we were talking about tactics a little bit during the races and yeah, so it's all good. So has there already been a, this kind of team principal or, or the established leader in the field sharing tidbits with the junior guy? Has that that's already happened? You shared some tactics and, and helped him in his Challenger Series days? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, it, it could have been much more because uh, at the time I was racing myself. I was so busy and busy with myself and with my team that there was not too much time to work too much together. Mm. Uh, but I think that's a really cool transition now. Because all my knowledge and the network I have, <clears throat> and I know how much uh, how much energy it takes to fly the airplane, to get ready, mm. to focus. Um, and if you have less work with, with everything around, then you have you have a much easier life to fly the airplane. Yeah. And I I tried during my airways time to do stuff new, like something what the other guys didn't do. 
And this is another one now. It's a ne it's a next step. It's a kind of a new career. It's a try. And this time I'm the first guy stepping back and into the position of a team principal, which gives me the opportunity to forward all my knowledge actually and 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 just the whole network, everything to flow, put him in the best situation he can have, that he is uh, really most relaxed and most best prepared. And it also gives me the chance to find out if uh, if this is something like it is, it, it is the idea of the air race at the end to have a lot of team principles and at every race team there should be a, a pilot, which is not the team principal. Um, this opens new doors. It's a okay. uh, it's it's just the way I think we have to push, and this is the future. And I'm super happy to be part of it, together with Flo, to try this and to be a leader on that. Okay, so Flo, you you know you, you shared a lot about your excitement about joining the team, but what I really want to get to is the point that you know when you deliver the goods on the the sort of the second tier level and you deliver it repeatedly, at some point you got to say, hey guys. You know, notice me. Am I going to get this chance? Was there a time along the way where you thought, I'm doing all I can and I'm winning and I'm not getting the chance? Tell me about that kind of, it's almost a, a, a it's a bit of a strange feeling where you, you're celebrating the success on the one point, but on the other time, you're actually trying to move on to the next level and try and get some success in a higher league. Tell me about the feelings uh, surrounding that. Yeah, I mean, I remember it was 2016 when I first... Um, won the challenger cup and uh, i think the year after i was invited for a qualification camp on the h540 from red bull air race um, and me and another guy daniel reefer we were selected as uh, standby masterclass pilots so this was a, a small step in the right direction but in the end um, i never made it in the in the in the actual masterclass and i was for sure, there were moments when I was uh, disappointed, but I, I went on and uh, um, did the best I could. And uh, I won another year and I became second in the year after. And also in the last year, I mean, I won three out of three races without an official uh, overall ranking. So for sure, there were moments uh, when I was uh, disappointed, but probably it was not the right time at that uh, moment. Okay, and this goes back to having a conversation with uh, with Steve a while ago where the idea in the beginning for Red Bull was to, to create this series and they got very experienced pilots to build this, but, uh, but in doing so, they actually almost entrenched their position because they were learning such specific skills on a very high-performance racetrack that no one can get unless you're racing. So unless you're racing, you're not going to have the skills to race, so how do you get into racing? And uh, if somebody isn't leaving the series, then how does somebody get into racing? And I suppose that's a, a lot of it where you were there too. Uh, you know, you were delivering the goods, but there was no opportunity for you to step up. Yeah, for sure. I mean, there was probably no spot available or, I mean, there are some other stuff uh, which counts, I would say, like um, trying to get a sponsor um, or something like that, or probably... Um, some guys thought I'm I'm too young or inexperienced to manage a team, for example. So I I mean it's not only delivering uh, good results in the end. I mean Matthias knows that it's much more than uh, flying good. It's it's managing a team and uh, having uh, a good spirit and motivation in the team. Um, so it's not only the the flying part in this uh, sport, which is very exciting. Yeah, uh, very exciting. Yeah, I'm sure this is the exciting part. Most pilots would love to give a, a chance at just trying out this this air racing event. But Matthias, now uh, we talked a little bit off air earlier about the idea of. Uh, so you're a world champion, and you you you've you've gone through eight seasons of this. Now you've gone all the way to to winning this Red Bull Air Race Series, and now you are owning your own team. As the team principal, you've got a unique opportunity here, because the way the format of world champs has changed, it's now. Uh, you can be the pilot independent of being a team owner and you can be a team owner independent of racing. You've got the world champion pedigree in yourself, able to coach the, the young up-and-coming Flo, who is a world champion in the Challenger Series. Uh, tell me a bit about your thoughts and your approach to how, uh, you know, the, there's definitely advantages to the setup and the relationship that the two of you have, knowing that you've got, you know, you've got some, some decades behind you knowing each other to begin with, but you've also got that championship pedigree. Yeah. 
So at first, it's a, it's a completely new setup, and we have to develop the whole mental approach, the business approach. And actually, when you raise yourself as a pilot and run your team at the same time, this is like you run your business with your passion. And the most important part is the flying. And now I'm switching the position. And now the most important point is actually the business case. It is the team. So my, my task is now to fit everything perfect together. This starts uh, with the team, with the pilot, with uh, the aircraft, with the partners, with communication, with everything around the team. And um, that's a, we, we, it's, it's a learning process as well. And there is quite some things uh, going on in, uh, in the background, which we maybe didn't think of. And it's a good thing to start like this. And maybe, and hopefully this will be an advantage to be the first doing it and um, I think and I know that if you run your team and fly yourself you don't have enough time to do the most important stuff for the team um, and maybe it, I don't want to guarantee anything but I think there are quite some uh, good opportunities to do things differently than we did before. Well, if you look at the relationship with uh, Toto Wolf and Lewis Hamilton, you don't see Toto Wolf jumping in a car and racing around the track. And there's a, a, a you know, there's a, a formula that works there. Great team boss and a great driver, great race pilot. So, so I agree with you. There's the, the, all the potential to be there. I think there's a lot of, um, uh, you know, b because of the legacy of how Air, Red Bull Air Race ran and being a, a pilot is the team. You know, there's a legacy of that and it carries over. But certainly, being the first, you're right, being the first to experiment with this, you as the team principal, like, what is your expectations of flow? And, and I know you want to guide him and teach him and coach him and, and be there for him. But, but it, at the outset, what's your expectations of him? Well, the expectation is that he's, he's flying well and safe. And uh, I, I think at the beginning, there is, uh, we, we, we don't set the expectation too high. Um, it has to be a learning, it has to, everything has to move together. Um, and actually, this is something we don't want to talk too much about. We still have to figure out exactly what the 100% plan will be, but we are we're working on it. And um, I mean, it's for the whole team, it's a new situation. And uh, it flows a big, a big part in it. And first of all, he has to, he has to work his, his way into the team. Um, he was only a challenger, not only, but he was uh, running um, challenger class. He got an airplane, which is similar like now. We, we put the airplane there, we organize everything around, and Flo jumps in the plane and flies. But it's, it's more than just jumping in the plane and flying. So it's also Lewis Hamilton is also doing a lot more than just jumping in, in a car. Um, yeah, and as you said, with uh, with Total Wolf, for example, or or any other team owner or team principal, it's uh, for me. I'm still in aviation. I'm in in the project. I really love. My whole heart is there. I invested everything and gave everything to be a part of the Red Bull Aries. And this continues, and yeah, let's let, let's see to make this step happen. And I'm, I'm pretty confident that it will be first of all, it will be fun because you need fun to be successful, and then it will be successful. Yeah, I like that word there, fun as well. You got to be enjoying yourself too. So, Flo, if uh, if we we jump back to you for a moment. Uh, you know, he was very generous with the idea that uh, the expectations are that we're going to work well together and it's going to be safe and everything. But you coming into a team now that has a world champion as the team principal, he's got uh, the, the background to prove it. He's, he's walked the talk and now he can share some insights with you. What are the kind of things that you're expecting that Matthias is going to share with you, uh, both on a big strategy concept over the, how we look at the year and also on race day or on race morning or that hour before you get into the aircraft or what are the, the tips from the piloting perspective that you would like, you know, Matthias to be able to share that, that really hits home for you? 
I mean, for sure, it's it's a lot of work, as Matthias said. It's it's not only jumping in the plane and go. I mean, there must be a routine, for example. Uh, probably, it's it could be a good idea to um, to check my own routine with Matthias if he has uh, a better idea to. I don't know if he sees I'm too nervous uh, before the flight or something like that. That could be um, small tips in um, in the beginning. And then also uh, later on the, the race tactics. I mean, uh, Matthias has uh, so much experience. Also, I mean, he, he flew this plane um, for a lot of years and a lot of hours. So um, I think uh, this will be um, very, very big tips from him um, concerning the plane. And uh, probably fitting me in, uh, in, in the team in the right way. Okay, and have you flown the plane yet? Um, have you have you had some um, training sessions started yet? Uh, not yet, but it's planned. Okay, uh, what is what is the what is your? I mean, there must be some uh, sort of some pride and some uh, you know nostalgia in the fact that you countrymen on this. It, is this is this a German racing team or you're a, a world racing team? What does the rest of your team look like, uh, Matthias? It's a German racing team, hundred percent German. <coughs> well, ac actually, we. In, in the Red Bull areas, we were international, kind of, partly, but uh, till now it's churn, and let's see what we come up with, but for the time being, <coughs> it's pretty German. Okay, well, there's, there's something special in that, too, and is, you, is the Matthias Doldra Racing, is that based in Tannheim, or where is your head office now for the race team? Yeah, till now, it's, it's based in Tannheim, and we are working on... It, it, it's still at, at the beginning process, so we are working on building everything up, and it also depends on what kind of partner we we will get and where we will position what. So this would uh, we will need a little bit of time to work on that to make a clear a clear point on that. And I, I mean, I know you've you've got many, many hours and years flying this aircraft as well. So, do you still see yourself, Matthias? Do you still see yourself flying it from time to time? You can do some race development on it and trying out parts and things like that too. Yeah, sure. I mean, it's my second home. I feel uh, super comfortable in the airplane. It's like my living room. Yeah. It's a, a comfort zone. Once I'm stepping in this airplane, it's like at home. It's so it feels so good. Um, and of course. Uh, I have to fly it once a while because it, there is nothing to compare, not not even a jet. Uh, the race, our race planes in our days, they are such amazing, cool race planes with so much energy, and just the pure joy of flying it is uh, is a reason to hop in it and lift off. And then, of course, uh, maybe do the one or other flight. Uh, for sure, I want to see Karen, so. I need to fly it on the watch. So there's also this um, possibility here now, Flo. I mean, the, this obviously expectations and pressure that you put on yourself. You know, the media looks at you, your boss looks at you, uh, but you look at yourself too, and, and you got to be happy with yourself when you go to bed or look at yourself in the mirror. Um, you know, you're coming in as the race pilot. This is your chance to shine. But also, as the first team with an independent uh, team principal and race pilot, is that there's every possibility that, well, maybe it doesn't work out for you. I know you don't want to think along those lines, but but what kind of pressure do you put in yourself to say, well, look, I'm here and I've got to prove myself and this is my shot? Yeah, for sure. I mean, this is uh, one of the moments in your life when you have been at the right uh, place at the right moment, you know, and uh, I want to uh, to fly um, Matthias' plane in a safe way and, uh, and uh, be... Um, be happy if he's proud of me of my flying so um, for sure there is a lot of pressure and also uh, with the whole new series uh, with the world championship air race with the with this new project uh, uh, with a um, separate uh, team principle uh, so everything is new and uh, probably we don't think about uh, things are uh, which are coming in the future so for sure there is and a uh, lot have of you pressure. met up with any of the other teammates yet Flo? I mean, the, the team, I presume there's a team of four, five, six, seven people already that is uh, this, the race team. Have you met the other guys? Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I met most of them, yeah. 
and uh, I think uh, we we are a, a okay, great team. Well, I, I think there's there's lots to to be spoken of that this idea that you've got this um, you know the championship winning uh, team principal who's guiding you, and uh, you know the pressures on yourself to deliver. You've got some pedigree behind you too. But uh, you know, w- have you flown the, the, the this version of the plane? Have you not been in it at all yet, or what is your experience on the the Aero GP One race plane? I mean, uh, it was uh, in the past in the Challenger class when we stepped from extra to the stock edge or to the V two yeah. edges. It was such a big step. I mean, uh, the plane it was amazing. I mean, it accelerates so much and so much power and much more lighter than the extra. And I think uh, this step uh, will be the same when I step from the Challenger edge to, to Matthias' uh, beast. Well, and in some respects, just the way life is right now, you know, you said you were at home, um, you know, you've got a lot of time with the family, but also you've got opportunities to do aerobatic flying and your training, no doubt your training will start in the, in the coming weeks as the team starts formalizing your partnerships and you're able to start doing your training with the race plane. What an opportunity that you've got time. <clears throat> excuse me, time that you have uh, available and you're not on a schedule. How do you see your sort of career panning out over the next 12-odd months, uh, 18 months as a race pilot, but also as an airline pilot? I mean, it's it's for sure hard to bring everything under one roof. And, I mean, family life, airline life, air race life, um, aerobatic competition life, but I think in the end uh, everything is possible in life uh, with a good motivation, with a good goal, and... Uh, uh, being prepared, so um, I think it should work okay, out. Okay, yeah. I mean, we were chatting with uh, with Melanie a few weeks ago, and uh, she was involved with Air France for a while, and at some point she couldn't r- manage that anymore, and she wanted to focus on the racing and her other flying, so she called that a day. I mean, would you envisage, Flo, that at some point you're no longer an airline pilot, or is the airline bug, is it is it strong within you, and you where there's a will, there's a way? For sure, um, I would uh, always try to stay um in the airline business as well because uh i like it a lot i mean i like i like the company it's a very good one and uh, uh to have something in the back um uh, a strong company or uh, uh airline business um it's it's always good i think and uh, so I, I will make it work somehow that at least i will fly a little bit uh airline Beside okay. <laughs> air racing, um, uh, Matthias, um, you know, going back to the days of, of the Red Bull Air Race and uh, and racing days, I'm sure there were times where you can think of this idea. You know, chatting with Matt Hall, where he was so focused on uh, on getting the business up and running, and uh, his actual own individual preparation resulted in him having that touch of the water in the United States. Uh, were there any times for you along the way where you thought if if we could separate a couple of things here and I could just focus on racing or I could just focus on the business of racing? Tell me about how it a time in your in your career in Red Bull Air Race where this opportunity that you now have would have seemed like a, a great opportunity back then. Okay. Actually, sometimes along the road in Red Bull Air Race, I wish I would have had a 100% team manager that I just fly and do nothing else. Mm. But it's uh, you cannot compare the Red Bull Air Race or the World Championship Air Race with Formula One. We are not there yet. Like uh, Flo needs still another job. If if we pass the level that we make the amount of money like Lewis Hamilton, <laughs> we can sure. we can stop flying airlines. Um, sure. So it, it takes it takes time. And uh, but I was hoping along the road or I was wishing that I would have someone to take to take away all the work I have around the racing team to only focus on the flying because that's it takes so much energy it's uh, that's the biggest fun also mm-hmm. and but uh, you you need a really good team around and only if you have a really good team you, you can be 100% successful you have to focus on yourself. You have to calm down. You have to be cool. There, there are so many, so many things which are involved to to, to win, to be really hundred percent successful, uh, and and that's really really difficult and takes a lot of energy away um, when you fly and you have to organize everything around. And this is. Another point why the air race is so unique, 
because it's actually one of the very few sporting events or, or, or championship and competitions where the pilot is a team owner. You don't have this mm -hmm. in, a, in a race car team, you don't have this in a soccer team. Um, that's very unique. And so we are going the next step and we will see, and I'm pretty, again, I'm pretty optimistic that we can work it together, that, uh, that we make the life as, as good as possible for Flo, but also have a really good time as a team. Yeah, in, in some respects, you were asking for what you are now for Flo, you were asking for yourself, you know, you wished you could have had something like this. Do you think there's a time when, um, I mean, it stands to reason the way I see it evolving now, you know, you guys are the first team doing it, but maybe in three, four, five years, there are no team principals flying the racing anymore. You know, it, that's, there's every possibility that that's the case. And then you've got one year advantage on everybody else. Absolutely. And I think that's, that is, and this will be the future of air racing that you need a team principal who is taking care of everything and that the pilot is focusing 100% of flying and his workaround of flying, which is uh, media work, communication, preparation, planning. And if you have 100% to work on your, on your duties as a pilot, I think then there is more success possible. It's, it's kind of easier for the pilot because he he has a lot less workload with everything around. And on the other side, for me as a team principal, it is, I take the pressure of myself to race, to win, to prepare, but I can do what I also love around racing, is to run the company, to run the team, to take care of the partners, of the development, of our corporations, of media, and we have to try it and i think it's uh this is the chance so we um yeah we're really looking forward to it yeah so you you're the only team principal then on the series that's going to be focusing on on building exclusively building a team i mean your your, your role of coaching is unique as well you'll have to add energy to that but your focus is to make a world-winning team and, uh, and, and Flo's focus is to, to get around the track as fast as possible. And he doesn't have to worry about the sponsors and doesn't have to worry about the, you know, whatever else goes on in the background. He can just focus and you can focus. So in some respects, you have every possibility to build a, a stronger team for, for the team's sake. E either of you, you can feel like you, you can chip in here. But you mentioned there, Matthias, you said that, uh, you know, even more fun. It's a different kind of fun. I remember the, the conversation with Ben Murphy last year as well about this. As a as a wingman with the red arrows, you know, I flew in the in the formation team where where you're just following the leader, you're just following the leader. You you doing your best to stay in position, and it's a lot of there's a lot of thrill there. You know, it, the challenge of getting it right, and then it goes on to the challenge of doing it well, and then there's a the challenge of doing it that it could never be better. But then you know, with Ben, he moved on as the leader, and uh, and we spoke about this idea that. You're now the leader of the team, and the challenge isn't to hang in there as the wingman and, and look good in formation, but it's to make the whole team look good. And there is a different element of satisfaction that comes with that. You don't have to exercise formation skills, but now you have to exercise the big picture skills, the safety skills, uh, looking, making sure the, the whole team looks good. And I suppose there's a similarity here too. Maybe it's not more fun, but there's a different kind of fun and, and certainly a whole different kind of satisfaction that comes with that. Very well right, said. <laughs> I, I can't I can't add uh, too much on that um, so yeah it's exactly how you mentioned it it's it, it's new it's, it's a new position and like I, like I said before it's, it's a new possibility and to be the first trying it I think I, of course it's from the pilot side it's a little bit of sad that I don't race the plane anymore but on the other side I want to be the first doing it to try it and i think it's a really good thing if you always want to be the first it yes. to yeah there's something in that too now now Flo, if you uh, if you if you go back to race day now and how you approach things um you've obviously been very successful you know the most successful challenger cup pilots uh, since the event started so whatever you did you did well how prepared are you to take that sort of uh, recipe book and, and move it all aside and say, right, we're now doing it this way. Let's look at uh, what uh, what the team needs me from me and, and uh, I start from a blank slate 
and we might do it completely differently or, or might do it a lot the same. But are you willing to just say, let's start from day one and let's see what does this team need of me? I mean, also in, in the challenger class, it was a, it was a process, you know, in the, in the beginning, uh, the coaches, for example, they said, um, in the first year, don't, don't rush, don't uh, race. Uh, I only want to see you flying safe from pylon to pylon and I don't want to see any stupid stuff. So probably, I mean, this approach is not bad, uh, having the same in, in, uh, in the GP1 class first of all, to be safe, but uh, I think I can probably get some, uh, I don't know, processes or um, moves I, I learned in the years in the challenger class to take it uh, also uh, as an experience in the team and, uh, and to bring it there. And uh, probably I don't, we don't have to start at, uh, at zero. Yeah, well, hopefully know. you don't have to start at zero. But I'm just trying to gauge your mindset of uh, this willingness to learn and, and start all over again if it's yeah. required of you. You know, you may have built up something that could get you to the top of the challenger, but in order to get to the GP1, you know, the, the podium on GP1, that's not good enough. And uh, the whole technique's wrong, and we need to start again, and you might have to go back for six races and then start building up again. Um, you know, it could be that it's completely different. Yeah, sure. Yeah, it, because it's new. It's uh, for everybody, for Matthias and me, new now. Uh, we are new in the role now. I'm I'm in the GP1 class, not not um, not uh, the lower class anymore, and uh, uh, in a real team. And uh, so, uh, but you it also will be really in some exciting. respects, Flo, you're also in the hot seat <coughs> here sure. because you're in the only team that has a pilot for hire kind of thing, you know, as it were, pilot for hire. So everyone in the junior series that's aiming to get to where you are, you know, that's where you are. That's the seat that's available. All the other teams are spoken for because the team owner is the guy flying. So now uh, you, you're going to be you're a marked man in, in some respects. Yeah, for sure. It's a, it's a real privilege um, for me to be there in, this, in that spot now. <clears throat> Now, I just want to ask you about, uh, you know, there's this concept that goes around in, in sort of creative circles as uh, do you go through the process, you know, like famous authors or successful authors that, that put out volumes of work. They work according to a process and, uh, and not towards a result. And in some ways you can liken that to sportsmen or, you know, all sorts of creative endeavors that require you to go through the motions of, of getting stuff done. And you're not too worried about what the results bring. You're worried about the process in order that if you do the things that you require of yourself, the results will follow. So can you talk me through a, a day or a, you know, a string of races that you've had flow where – You've, uh, do, you, do you feel it on the day where you, you just feel like your setup was good? You, you know, you had a good breakfast, you rested well, you, you read this book or you, you listened to that music, you took these many minutes uh, versus the day where you just jumped in and it either clicked or it didn't click. Uh, what are your thoughts around sort of process and building up a winning race? Um, yeah, it's a, it's a very difficult question. I mean, I can also talk about my experience I had in, in the challenger class, for example, on races where, um, where I struggled a lot. Um, for example, al already during the first, uh, um, practice runs. And, uh, I, I saw when I, I was biting a lot and I, I wanted so badly and, uh, I want to be faster and, uh, why it's not working. Then in the end, it didn't work out. The best, uh, races for me were they, um, when I came to a race site and I knew exactly how to fly and uh, everything was relaxed. This, uh, this was the easiest way for me when, when I saw the racetrack at the first time in real life and I knew, I knew what to do. But when, when there was some difficulties and uh, I saw when I, I really wanted it and uh, I was biting and racing and pushing a lot, uh, then it uh, went the other way around. Okay. And was there any, can you tell if there's any difference in your setup to the day? I mean, is, uh, the day that you did well, was your, your process, the, the three, four, five hours before jumping in the cockpit, any different on, on either of those occasions where it went really well and, and not well? Um. I don't remember a special race where the routine before um, was different. I mean, I always tried one hour before to, to do my own routine and do the same stuff, uh, which worked out for me. And uh, uh, so 
I don't know if it was the routine or just the racetracks uh, who fitted me more than others, you know. Uh, some some are more suitable. Now, talking about sort of seeing the racetrack for the first time, have you made use of simulators or, or Matthias? So, you know, what is your plan with regards to simulators in, in your team and building up the developing the, the skill set for, for the race year? For sure, we'll try to find some, some kind of simulation to prepare Flo uh, in, in the best way. And uh, to what we said before, is I, I think it's really important as a pilot that you are mentally free, that you don't worry about anything. You have to be actually a completely relaxed fighter pilot. You have to approach it relaxed and then shoot it if there's a target. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a really big mental, mental game and maybe 50-60% of the game is mental and um, yeah, and that's, that's very important. And have you, uh, Matthias, over the years, have, has your, che- your team changed significantly or have you got the same core group of people that were with you from the beginning of, of the Red Bull Air Race series? Um, actually, it's a pretty constant. My team coordinator, Susan, she got pregnant at one stage, so my daughter continued to, to work for me on this role. Um, we had to swap the technician once, um, but in the long run, it was really stable and it was really good to work together with all of them. So I never had a, a big failure in, uh, in the team and yeah, I was really happy and lucky to find the right people. But like I said before, if the team has to work 100% together. And if that's not working, it can be really successful. But uh, even, even if it's, if it's <laughs> the funny thing is, even if everything works perfect, sometimes you are not successful. And sometimes yeah. you maybe don't even find out why. But if you like flow, if you, if you set yourself too much under pressure, it's not working for sure. Mm. So it's, it's going back to the mental game and we could talk hours about it. Um, and sometimes or very often it's much easier to find out what the problem was when you fail. If yes. everything is running 100%, then you ask yourself, what was it that made you so successful? And was it in the morning because I had orange juice in, instead of water? <laughs> or was it a cappuccino? Or was it four weeks before something changed in your brain? Um, and and also, the, it's like you race three times a weekend, like on race day, you, you race three times. Yeah. And it's three times one minute. It's not 90 minutes or one and a half hours, whatever, when you play tennis or soccer, you have the chance. If you lose one game, you can still beat the other guy six to one. But if you, yeah. if, if you fail a tenth of a second in the air race, you can lose the whole race. Yeah. And you need a little bit of luck. And sometimes you think if you are honest or too honest, you lose because there is maybe you, you, you should cheat more or try to not, not cheat, but try to cheat. Everyone is going on the edge. Um, so there's, there's always something going on. And mm. I'm, al- I'm also the guy who is, I'm digging into it and I'm, if I see something which is not working, like also in the organization, what we had in 2019 at the last year of Red Bull Aries, when, when it somehow fell apart, it just worked in my brain. And then I was thinking too much about that because I was worried about the project. I was worried, worried about the team, about myself. And, uh, but of course I couldn't change it, but I still was worried about it. And that worked in my brain. And that's yes. really important to, to just leave it. Everything which you cannot change, just don't care about it. And don't even care about it, what the other guys think. Um, or think, whatever. Um, so the mental approach, you can talk for hours. And this is all coming down to three times one minute in one day. Yeah, when you put it that yeah. way, you know, you've got <laughs> you've got eight times eight times in the year you have to race three for three minutes each. You've got twenty four minutes, minutes of racing. <laughs> yeah. It all flow it boils down to twenty four minutes of racing next year. Are you up for the challenge? 
<laughs> 24 minutes. Well, you put it that way, it, it sounds incredible that this whole traveling uh, expedition, teams all over the world, the teams of five, six, seven, eight people, millions of euros being spent for 24 minutes of racing. It seems incredible. We're going to move into the last quick uh, rapid fire. Three questions, uh, two for you, Flo, one for you, Matthias, and we'll wrap it up. So at the end of race weekend, Flo, it's all said and done, the dust settles and it's all over. What is your go-to meal that you like to enjoy after racing? Uh, I would say local food. For example, in Japan, uh, sushi or in uh, in the U.S., a uh, nice steak or um, a beer and chicken wings. Okay, that sounds good. Local food is great. For you, um, uh, Matthias, you know, thinking back that you've flown obviously lots of different types of aeroplanes, but you know, there's, there's some aeroplanes that you look at and it, you just don't, you don't get a good feeling about it looking at it, but when you jump inside, what is the most underrated aircraft to fly? The underrated aircraft to fly? In other words, it, it didn't look so good, but when you flew it, it just flew so nicely. Um, I would say that's a piece in the stock. The piece in the piece stock. In the Do you know piece in the stock? Is that that funny, like a mosquito-looking thing, like a dragonfly? It's huge. It has huge wings, a huge fuselage. The piece in the stock. Do you know it's from Second World War? Yes, yes. It's a German airplane, and when you look at it, you say, oh, "That's it." But it's so much fun. And the, and the coolest thing is that you almost don't need any distance for takeoff, you don't need any distance for landing. It, it's not agile, but it's so fun to fly. So I would say maybe this one. Okay, that's a good answer. Last question for you, Flo. If you could only own one aircraft for the rest of your life, this is the one you're going to fly from now on until your last day. Which aircraft would that be? Aerobatic airplane. Which one? <laughs> All of them. <laughs> Not very committed there to one aeroplane. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna name it for you. Name one. Okay, H which one are you gonna own for? H five forty. H five forty. That's a good answer. Well, gentlemen, Matthias, Flo, it's been wonderful chatting with you. I'm really curious to see how this unfolds. Uh, this is uh, experimental for everybody, but you guys are taking that first leap, and uh, the new team approach is going to be a wonderful setup. All the very best with your setup and your, your preparation and planning and building the team over the next few months. And uh, we look forward to getting together as the race season kicks off next year. Looking forward to it. Thanks for the talk and hope to meet you in person soon. Yeah, that'd be great. Thank you. Thank Thanks you very for, much. Thanks for your time. It was great.